Hi, today we're looking at Functional Skills Maths Entry Level 3. We've got the Pearson LXL exam board. This is past paper set 6 and we're going to start with the non-calculator section. Question 1. Max buys a bike and cycling equipment. These are the amounts he spends. So we've got a bike, it's £569. Cycling equipment, £294. Calculate the total of these amounts. Okay, so if we want the total, we're going to need to add these two together. So we've got 569 and 294. So we're lining them up, so we've got the units above the units, tens above the tens, hundreds above the hundreds. So 9 plus 4 is 13, but the 3 carry the 1. 6 plus 9 is 15, plus the 1 is 16. 5 plus 2 is 7, plus 1 is 8. So we get a total of 863. Okay. Question 2. Max is training for a cycle race. He plans to cycle 68 kilometres each week for 12 weeks. How far will Max cycle in the 12 weeks in total? So what we want is we want 68 times 12, because there's 12 of them. Uh, but what we're going to do, we could do it as a column, but a two-digit times a two-digit can get a little bit messy. So we're going to say, well, let's split this up. And we're going to think of it as 68 times 10. So we're going to have 10 68s. And well, if we've only got 10 68s, we need another two 68s. So 68 times 2. So let's start off. And I'm going to re reverse the order. So I'm going to say 10 times 68. So 10 68s. When we're multiplying by 10, we just put a 0 on the end. And now we're going to do our two 68s. And the reason I'm doing it this way is you can see... 10 plus 2, we're going to get 12 in total. Now, if we want two 68s, well, I'm going to work that out over here separately. So I'm going to say 2 times 8 is 16. 6 carry the 1. And 2 times 6 is 12, plus the 1 is 13. So we've got 136. So we've got 10 68s, two 68s. If we want 12 of them, we need to add these together. So 0 plus 6 is 6. 8 plus 3 is 11. 1 carry the 1. 6 plus 1 plus 1 is 8. So we've got a total of 816 kilometres, which we can write down here. OK. Question 3. Max has these bottles of water in his fridge. So we've got bottle A, bottle B, bottle C, and we've got different amounts in each of them. Does bottle A contain more water than the total of bottle B and bottle C? Well, these are both in millilitres. This is in litres. So we want to convert them so they're all in the same units and it's easier to compare. Well, one litre is equal to 1,000 millilitres. And we're interested in the total of bottle B and bottle C. So what we want is we want 750 millilitres from here and we want to add on 300 millilitres from here. 0 plus 0 is 0, 5 plus 0 is 5, 7 plus 3 is 10. So we've got a total of 1,050 millilitres. So does bottle A contain more water than the total of bottle B and C? Well, no, it's less. So we can say no. And we can add 1,000 is less than, you can use the words or use the symbol, 1,050. And we just want to make sure that we tick no down there as well. And question four. Max has £350 to pay for gym membership. 
The gym membership costs £16 each month. What is the greatest number of months that Max can pay for? Show how much money he will have left over. So we want to know how many £16 go into 350. Or in other words, 350 divided by 16. But we know there's going to be some left as well because they say show how much money will you have left over. Well, we can do this one as a bus stop method. It might seem a little bit different because you've maybe not done it with a two-digit number before. But we can, we can still try this. So we can say, well, does 16 go into 3? No. Because 16 is bigger than 3. But what about 16 into 35? Well, it certainly goes into it at least once. Uh, what about any more time? So let's try 16 plus 16. Let's see what two 16s would be. Well, 6 plus 6 is 12. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3. So, right, 16 goes into 35 twice. And how much left over? Well, from 32 to 35, we've got 33, 34, 35. So, 3 carried over. So, what about the 16 going to 30? Well, yes, it does. How many times? Well, we know that two 16s are 32, so it can't go in twice. So, it must only go in once. And how much left over? Well, what we can do, we can do it over here. We can say, well, 30. Let's take off one lot of 16. Well, 0 minus 6, we can't do because 6 is bigger than 0. So we'll reduce this to a 2 and pass one over. So 10 minus 6, we get 4. 2 minus 1, we've got 1. So we've got a total of 21, remainder 14. So that means 21 months of membership with £14 left over. And now we're on to the calculator section. Question 1. Max wants to cycle from his home to the gym. And we've got a bit of a map there. In which direction does Max need to cycle? And we've got lots of options down here, but let's try and work it out first and then see if one of those options is available. So, he's going from his home, his home's here, to the gym. Well, if this is north, we want to go in this direction. Well, let's fill in some of these compass directions. Never eat shredded wheat. So north, east, south, west. Okay, well, this is between east and south. And when we're doing a direction that's halfway between the two, a compass direction, we always go with the top or the bottom first. So because it's between these two, we're going to go with the south and then the east. So we're going to call it SE or southeast. So let's see if that's one of the options. Yes, it is. So we can tick that one there. Question two. The gym has a special offer on membership. And there's our special offer. Pay for 12 months of membership. Save one third of the cost. The cost of 12 months of membership is £180. Max thinks he will save £50 with the special offer. Is Max correct? Okay, so basically we want to work out what a third of £180 is. So you can think of it as one third times 180, or you can think of it as 180 divided by 3. And remember this is the calculator section. So 180 divided by 3 gives us £60. Well, £50 is not equal to £60, so is max correct? No. And then we can add it down here, we can tick the no, and we can put £60. Question 3. Max uses these weights in the gym. So we've got 2.5 kilograms, 5 kilograms, 7.5 kilograms. The weights follow a pattern. 
Max wants to use the next weight up from 7.5 kilograms. What weight does Max use? So if we're looking at the pattern, we want to look at the difference between the numbers. So we're gonna, if we look in the difference between these two, we're going to take the bigger number, 5 kilograms, and subtract the smaller number, 2.5. And we get a difference of 2.5. So we're adding on 2.5 kilograms. Let's look at the difference between these two numbers. So start with 7.5 because it's the bigger number. Subtract 5. So this one we're also adding on 2.5 kilograms. So if we want to know the next number, if we're using the same pattern, we're going to need to add another 2.5 kilograms. We've already got it in a calculator, so we can start with the 2.5, add on 7.5, and we get 10 kilograms, which we need to write there. Question four. Max wants to go to a yoga class. He has a list of yoga classes. And here we've got the day and time of yoga classes. Right, so we've got Monday, Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, and the times for each of them. Let's move this up a bit. Okay. Max wants... Uh, let's move it up so we can see the full question. There you go. Max wants a class which is on Monday or Wednesday. So we want a Monday or a Wednesday. The class must start between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. Which class does Max choose? Well, he wants a Monday or a Wednesday. So this one's no good, it's a Thursday. This is no good, it's a Friday. Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Monday. So those ones look all right. It's got to start between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. Well, 5.45, that's before 6 p.m., so that's no good. 6.30, well, that's after 6 and before 7, so this one's looking good. Let's check the others. 7.30, that's after 7, so that's no good. And 5.30, that's before 6. So, yep, yeah, that's the one we want. Okay, uh, so we can just write Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Question 5. This is the shape of a cushion used in the yoga class. The faces of the shape are rectangles and triangles. How many faces on the shape have four right angles? Right, so for a right angle, I'm going to draw a rectangle here. Just a quick sketch. And a right angle is a corner like that. We often use a square. So it's where the lines are perpendicular to each other, so they're meeting straight on there. So like you'd expect in the corner of a room. So we're looking for a shape that's got four right angles like that. Well, this base piece, this rectangle here, is going to have one, two, three, four. It, they might not all look exactly like right angles because this is a 3D shape that's drawn. But if you imagine, it would actually be a rectangle to start with. It's just because they've had to draw it this way to make it look 3D and stand out. Uh, well, then we've got this triangle at the side. Well, we'd have a right angle here, but those wouldn't be right angles. What about this back piece? We'd have a right angle there, and there, and there, and there. So we've got the base, we've got the back. This triangle, again, you're not going to have any there. But what about this top piece? We'd have one, two, three, Four right angles. So we've got the base, the back, and the top. So we'd have three. Question six. Max wants to buy a yoga mat. The yoga mats have different lengths. Max buys the second longest mat. Which yoga mat does he buy? Okay, so let's have a look. We've got the measurements here. If I move it up, we should be able to see all of them. He wants the second longest. And we've got six of them there. Okay, so maybe let's try and rank them in order. Which would be the longest? Well, we've got 173. 185 would be longer. 170, 180. Any longer than this? 
No, this is still the biggest number. So this would be the first one. We want the second longest. We want 173. Well, 180 is longer than that. It's longer than this one. But 183, that's going to be longer than 180. And it's also longer than 178. So this would be the second longest. So we can take that one there. Question seven. The cost of the yoga mat is £44.60. Max gives £60 to the shop assistant. How much change should the shop assistant give to Max? Use correct money format. Well, he's given £60 and they're going to keep £44.60 or take away £44.60. So we're going to be left with, and it's going to be money, so we've got a pound sign there. So 60 minus £44.60. And we get 15.4. But remember, because it's money, we're going to have to make it 40p. 0.4 of a pound means 40p. Okay, don't write the p. If you write the p, you'll lose a mark. I've seen it happen. Okay, so don't put the P, we've got the pound sign instead. Abby is a manager at the gym. She allows a width of 110 centimetres for each person at the yoga class. The width of the room for the class is six metres. Abby thinks there's enough width for five people. Is Abby correct? Show where you think this. Right, well, we've got different measurements. We've got centimetres or different units. Centimetres and meters. Let's turn everything into the same unit. So let's turn this into centimeters. Well, I know there are 100 centimeters in one meter. So if we want to turn this into centimeters, we're going to have to multiply it by 100 because we're going to have more centimeters than meters. You might not need your calculator for this one, but we'll use it to check. Six times 100 is 600. Okay. Abby thinks there's enough width for five people. So she needs 110 centimetres each. Well, let's check. So let's do five lots of 110 and see what we get. Well, for five lots of 110, we need 550 centimetres. Well, that is less than 600 centimetres. So, yes, she's correct. They will fit in and we'll still have a little bit of space left over. Uh, make sure we remember to tick down here. Question nine. Abby wants to buy a locker for the yoga room. There is a space in the room with a height of 1.82 metres and a width of 0.35 metres. Abby buys the largest locker that will fit in the space. Which locker does Abby buy? And we've got four lockers to choose from. I'm going to go with one measurement at a time. So the space has a height of 1.82 metres. So is there anything more than 1.82 metres? No, they're all under. So the height isn't a problem. But the width, the space has got a width of 0.35. So we can't have anything that's more than 0.35. So this one... It's too big, and this one, 0.45, that's too big as well. So it's going to have to be one of these two. And she wants the largest one that will fit. Well, 1.8 is bigger than 1.78. You can think of that as like 1.80. So that's the one we need. Question 10. The locker costs £89.40. Round this amount to the nearest pound. Okay, let's do a number line. Well, what pound is it between? Well, if we just took the pence off, it would just be 89 pounds. But it's got something on, so it must be more than that. Well, the next pound up from it would be 90 pounds. Well, what would be halfway in the middle? Well, half of a pound is 50p. So halfway in the middle would be 89 pounds... 50. £89.40, well that's going to fit in this side. It doesn't matter exactly where, but we know it's this side. That means we're going to round down to the £89. Q. 
question 11. Abby finds out which exercise classes people go to. These are her results. So we've got yoga, cardio, weights, dance, martial arts. Lots there. Complete the frequency table for the results. Okay, so they've already counted how many dance classes, how many cardio classes, how many weights classes, and how many martial arts classes. We want to know how many yoga classes there are. So we can just go through. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There you go. That's all we need to do. Okay, question 12. Abby has this information about membership for the gym. Month one, we've got 476 people. Month two, 623 people. Calculate the difference between the number of people in month one and the number of people in month two. So remember when we're working out the difference, we always take the biggest number first and subtract the smaller number. So 623 minus 476, and we get 147 people. Question 13, part A. Round 476 to the nearest 100. So we can do it similar to the one of the earlier questions. Well, if we just look at the hundreds, the lower one would be 400. And the next 100 up from 400 would be 500. So again, let's think about what halfway would be. Well, if the whole range is 100, what's half of 100? Hopefully you know this, but we can check it with the calculator. 100 divided by 2. So halfway is 50. So halfway between these must be 450. 476 is going to be in this side. So we round up. To 500. Then they ask us to use the rounded number to check your answer to question 12. Okay, well, question 12 was 623 minus 476. If we're using 500 instead of 476, we've now got 623 minus 500. 623 minus 500, then we get 100. And 23. And that's our check. Question 14. Abby is a personal trainer. She has this information about exercise for her clients. So client, this client is a beginner. They can do between 1 and 10 push-ups and 2 sets. Uh, client 2, intermediate, they do between 11 and 20 push-ups and they do 3 sets. And their advanced client, uh, they do between 21 and 40 push-ups and 4 sets. Abby wants to show this information in a table. Organise the information in a table. Right, well I'm going to do a small table. I'm going to do it up here, squash it in, but just so that we can see how we do it. Well, we've got 3 bits of information, so I'm going to have client... push-ups, and sets. And just to make it a little bit tidier, we'll make it a bit more like a table with some lines down. So client one is beginner, and they can do one to ten push-ups and two sets. The next client is Intermediate, 11 to 20 push-ups, and three sets. And the last client. So basically we're copying the information that they've given us, but we're putting it in a table, so it's a bit easier to read, and you can see it all in one place instead of having to look at the three separate bits of information. Question 15. Max wants to know his height. The ruler shows his height. Max thinks his height is more than 180 centimetres. 
Is Max correct? Well, 180 is up here. He's below it. In fact, let's see how much below. What are each of these worth? Let's see if they're worth so 171, 172, 73, 4, 5, 176, 177, 178. Let's just check. 179, 180. Yep. Yeah. So, is it correct? No. Okay. And we're also saying exactly how high it is. Okay, but we don't need to say that. We can just say no because the arrow is below 180. And then we just want to make sure we tick no. In fact, you do have to put a height in here. So we would put 178. Okay, question 16. Abby wanted to buy a protein bar. The table shows the number of grams of protein and the number of calories for some protein bars. And we've got bars A to G. Abby wants to choose a bar with the highest weight of protein that is less than 200 cal calories. It's got to be less than 200 calories. Okay, so this top one, that one's no good. This one is no good. This is less than 200. This one's not. That one's less. That one's not. And that one's less. So we've got one, two, three to choose from. We need the one with the highest weight of protein. So now we look at this column, weight of protein. We've got 21, 11, and 5. That's the highest one. So she chooses bar C. Question 17. The chart shows the number of people who use the gym. Okay, we've got a nice chart there. Number of people going up the side. We've got weak along the bottom. Abby thinks the total number of people who used the gym in week one and in week two is less than 900. Is Abby correct? So we want to know the total of week one and week two. So you might think that sounds nice and straightforward. So we'll go to the top of one. And we read across. Now, before we start just kind of guessing what these, what value it might be, we've got to work out what each of these gaps are worth. Okay, so if you think, well, look, if we look here, this gap is worth 100. And we've got one, two, three, four, five sections there. So if we do 100 divided by 5, it's going to tell us what each of these sections is worth. So 100 divided by 5 means they're worth 20 each. So we don't want to guess. We know they're worth 20. So this, we've got 500, and then we've got one, two sections. So in other words, it's 500 plus 20 and plus another 20, which if we do on our calculator... is 540. Okay, so that's for that week one. Now what about for week two? Well, read across. We've got 400 plus one section. So we've got 400 plus 20. So that one's a bit nicer. Hopefully you can see if it's 400, actually, we can write that one there. 400 plus 20 is going to be 420. So if she's interested in the total number of people who use the gym in week one and week two, we need 540 plus 420. We've still got 540 in the calculator. We can add on 420 and we get 960. Well, that is more than 900. She thinks it's less. Is Abby correct? No. And we can tick the no box down on the no section down there. And then the last question is question 18. Abby has a client in the afternoon. She looks at the time on a clock when the client arrives. At what time does the client arrive? Okay, so 
there's a few different ways that you can you can write it. Uh, but if we look at the hour hand first of all, we'll see that it's before the two. Okay, so it's going to be one something. Okay, and remember each of these is worth five minutes. So we've got one, two, three. Well, in fact, we've got ten sections. So we've got ten lots of five, which is fifty minutes. So it's one fifty, and it's in the afternoon. So one fifty p.m. Alternatively, you could split the face in half and say this is the past and this is two and it's on the two side well the next hour would be two well how many minutes to two is it well it's five ten so we can say ten minutes to two uh, well we can say two o'clock or 10 minutes to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So that would be right. That would also be right. Either one's fine. And that's the end of the paper. So I hope you found it helpful. Please subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you get updated as I add more videos. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you.